Oxygen Blast Technical Seminars are an Intertech production. For instructor-led.net, Java, and XML courses, visit us at www.intertech.com. Here's some of those resources that I mentioned. Most of these are Oracle white papers, um, uh, written at a time probably when they were Sun white papers. Uh, but there's Java tuning, Java SE6 performance, fact about Java hotspot virtual, uh, virtual machine. I'd recommend if you have the time, they're not long reads, they're extremely informative. The link here if you want to check out some commercial software for profiling like JProbe. Uh, JProfiler is another popular one. Here's some more memory management, tuning the garbage collection. So if you want to figure out what some of those uh, ergonomics are that you can use to tune that garbage collection, they're listed here. Understanding weak references. I thought this was one of the best explanations I found online of uh, how and when to use weak references, such as the weak hash map. And, of course, the documentation for Visual VM. We have a lot of different uh, resources that are available for you uh, for further learning. Um, again, these will be available to you when you uh, download the slides probably tomorrow. So what did we do today over the last two hours? Uh, we looked at defining what exactly performance is, seeing that there are a lot of different areas that uh, have performance requirements. What components can affect performance? It's not always your application. It's not always the JVM. We talked about some low-hanging fruit of what you can do before you start tuning your app. Again, look for updates for the JDK and for the APIs you're using. The uh, performance tuning lifecycle, how you might want to approach that by starting with your requirements, creating a baseline, doing some objective metrics, and then identifying bottlenecks. After you identify bottlenecks, we looked at uh, Visual VM, our profiling tool, how we can get more information. What kind of performance enhancements you might want to consider implementing for common problems, such as what happens if I run out of memory, or what happens if a method is taking too long to execute, or if the garbage collector is running too frequently. We looked at some quick uh, tuning demonstrations and followed it up with some additional best practices. So I'm going to turn this over really quick to uh, Dan McCabe. Let's see if he's on the line. I am. Thank you, Jason. Well, uh, maybe you can take this time, Jason, kind of skim through uh, uh, some of the questions there. And uh, due to uh, the late start here, we'll just take a, a few of the questions. Uh, we'll provide to have Jason provide response to those, and then uh, the plan is we will. I've got a copy of all the uh, questions that were submitted. We will provide answers to those, and uh, we will attach them to the slide deck. And when we make the slide deck and recording available, you'll be able to see a full uh, Q&A response uh, from everything submitted today. So if you've got additional questions, uh, please go ahead and submit it through the Q&A session at the top there. Um, I'll go through the last uh, couple slides here, keep it brief, uh, more marketing uh, fluff here. Uh, again, keep uh, keep connected with Intertech through our newsletters, our iTunes podcasts, our YouTube videos, Oxygen Blast uh, seminars like this one today uh, as well. Uh, Keep an eye out for the Intertech blog at intertech.com backslash blog. Uh, there's uh, regular postings from Jason and colleagues here at Intertech. Just, again, uh, where where we come from, uh, Intertech training specializing in Java EE open source uh, technologies as well. We have a .NET, SQL Server, and SharePoint or Microsoft practice, and then kind of the bridging gap between the two uh, open source technologies uh, such as XML and, and AJAX. We offer uh, multiple formats for uh, our classes, all instructor-led. Today, it's either uh, you're at our facilities, um, we're, we're headquartered here in Minnesota, an instructor comes to your facility for a private or custom engagement, or we also offer instructor-led virtual training, very similar to what you've got here today, uh, with the exception to it being a lot more interactive. Uh, as well, a large portion of our business is actual um, client engagements where uh, individuals like Jason are going out to uh, client facilities and helping them with their projects. So if you have any questions or assistance that we can provide you with on the consulting side of us, our house here, please give us a call. With that, I will turn it back over to you, Jason, to uh, address a few of the questions.
Oh, actually, before before I do that, uh, I know there was a number of questions uh, regarding the uh, slides and uh, recording. Again, I think Jason mentioned it, but uh, as soon as we're done here, we will get this all put together. I'm hoping to have the recording uh, in fashion for you guys tomorrow morning, and I will send out an email with links to both the slides and the recording uh, as soon as they're available. So thank you again for uh, working through the early technical difficulties. Back to you, Jason. All right. Thanks a lot, Dan. And again, thanks uh, to everyone for uh, joining me the last uh, two hours for this uh, presentation. If you have any feedback or any questions, again, I want to encourage you to send me an email and uh, be happy to help out the best I can. Um, so I'm looking at some of the questions that are posted here. I'm just going to take a couple. One question has to do with uh, whether a variable should be placed on the heap or in or on the stack, and this actually this question was actually asked twice, um, and I'll give the first answer I gave, and then um, he's asked me to not repeat the first answer and go a little further, so I'll give both answers here. Now, my my first attitude about whether a variable should be on the heap or the stack, and for those who aren't familiar with this, um, whenever you create a local variable that's inside of a method, um, that is going to be placed on the stack whereas an instance variable for your object will be placed on the heap. Um, and my first answer was that should not be a performance question. That should be a design question. If we're going to stick with a strict object-oriented um, approach to programming uh, and design, then we would have to ask ourselves, is this a temporary variable that is used for a um, operation, some sort of a method? Well, then it's local, and it'll be placed in the stack. Is this something that's instance variable data that should be um, kept with a particular instance, or maybe even static variable data that should be kept with a class? In that case, that's going to determine where those variables are going to be go. But if you want to just know from the strict, I think this was the second follow-up question to this, um, what, uh, What's going to perform better? Well, the the uh, thread, excuse me, the stack is going to uh, perform better. It's uh, much more quick to put those and pop those off the stack um, than to access something that's on the heap. So it's uh, yes, it'll perform a little bit better, but uh, you do have some issues in terms of size. Stack is a much smaller area than uh, the large heap, which contains all of your objects. Um, but please consider the design of your app uh, instead of, uh, you know, coming up with some strange, uh, you know, designs by putting variables where they don't belong, for example. Um, what else we got here? What is the performance overhead of using Java Reflection? You know, I don't actually have any statistics for you, but I can tell you it is a memory um, hog. It's a processor hog. It's considered extremely um, expensive to use Java Reflection and should be used in only the most extreme situations where you really don't know what kind of object you're going to be dealing with um, or, you know, you need that kind of flexibility to handle lots and lots of different types of objects. Um, so I don't have an actual statistic for you. I'm sure that some people have done benchmarks of uh, reflection. And, of course, you know, it's going to change depending on um, what the processor is. Are you using multiple processors? What else is going on in the system? Um, but I can tell you that, yes, it is expensive. I'm looking at uh, other questions here. I'm trying to find what I can answer in the next minute. I've extended my heap to 1.5 gigabytes and it still gives me a memory error. It's a program where it works with smaller files. So I, I'm guessing what you mean is that when you have a file that's um, large and, it, and it's working with that file, you run out of space. What I would do is I would use a profiler. I would read the, the file that's being um, created and try to take a look at, um, you know, exactly uh, what objects are being created to deal with that file um, and see if there's any way that you can potentially use, oh, I don't know, what's one way I would hit this? I guess first, I guess the first thing I would do is just look for some, some excessive object creation and try to figure out if there's a better algorithm that you can use to temporarily store um, the file stuff that you're reading. Um, I remember having a problem with the uh, PDF creator that I was using uh, many years back, 
And what I found that it was doing was, in order to create the PDF, it was literally doing this recursive object creation. So uh, object A would contain a little portion of the PDF. Then instead of just having another object B, which would have some more of the PDF, the second object would be a copy of A and B, and then the next one would be a copy of A and B and C, and so on. So it was like, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger when it didn't need to be. So I would take a look at um, excessive object creation like that and try to see if there's a way that you can more efficiently handle how that object or those files are being read and temporarily stored in memory. So there's a couple of other questions here, but uh, we're, we're at the end of the uh, seminar. I'm going to um, try to uh, answer some of these in the uh, follow-up slide. If for some reason I miss your question or you have other questions that come up between uh, now and when those slides are posted or really any time, again, feel free to email me. I'm just going to type my email address right here again so you can write that down. It's jshapiro at intertech.com. Um, feel free to send me your questions. Please don't send me jar files and ask me to debug your code. That's uh, probably an email I might not answer. But if you have any questions about the topics we covered, I'd be more than happy to help answer. So I think that concludes anything. Anything else, Dan? No, I think uh, I think we're good. Thank you, Jason. And again, thank you all for uh, for joining us this afternoon. And and uh, look for that email. Uh, hopefully by tomorrow morning in your inbox that will include the links for the download uh, slides as well as the playback of the recording. Thank you very much and have a great afternoon. Thanks, everyone. For more free learning resources and to see the latest lineup of our instructor-led .NET, Java, and 